to Radical Truth to Power, the progressive news show with Lift BS3. I am your host, Marlon Clybert, along with the full crew of Theas Robinson, Anna Hart, and Tracy Carson. On today's show, I have made up my decision. I'm tired of getting pissed off. I ain't going into my uh, birthday week being pissed off at what these people did to us all those years. So we're going to have a little more relaxing day, which is rather funny considering that's what I use Saturday night vibe for for a relaxing day. But I, hey, hey, we're going on our third season. Minds can change. So today I'm going to push the button because this is something that I'm probably going to go into next week too. And I have to explain it because I think people was getting confused at the title. And the title is Top 5 Most out of touch comments and what i mean by comments i mean statements that we was grew up on or people who are out of touch with with reality about how life really is because they live in this warp reality because they lived in that reality and they figure everybody lives in that reality so those are the, the most out of touch comments i was talking about also, the returning of real or nah, in which, again, me and Foxy disagree on. But the disagreement is with a twist. So pay attention to that. It's not as black and white as everybody thinks of it. And, of course, Foxy's videos of the week. But, of course, before we even get started, Brother Theus Robinson, fresh off the anniversary. How are you today? I'm all right. How y'all doing? <laughs> That's the shortest thing I ever got. Good. Great and wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Anna? I'm all right. Hey, glad all four of y'all on today. Yeah. So, Tracy. I'm doing fantastically well. The sun is shining and it's 36 degrees. And my blood sugar is good. Thank you, Tracy, for putting some words in there. Thank you. Appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's get this party started. So let's start off small and work our way up. Buying a house. And by the way, I'm going to tell y'all right now, do not look at the video. It is very distracting. I apologize for it. It doesn't add anything into this whatsoever, but I couldn't find a way of removing the video from the audio. So don't look at the video in the background. Just 
pretend it doesn't exist. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I don't want nobody coming and talking about that video was very destructive. I know it is. So buying a house. Story four, why are you still living at home at 23? Just buy a house coming from someone whose parents bought her a house. Have a friend whose wealthy parents paid for his schooling, his rent, his startup, his car, and his down payment. He asked when we were finally going to buy a house because renting is such a waste of money. Oh, these are all short, too. Oh, was that the whole video? I thought you were just yeah. cutting it short. No, that's the whole video. <clears throat> well, the first of it. That's the first. Well, stuff. I mean, that's out of touch, but it's out of touch for a reason. I mean... Um, okay, you said you want this to be more lighthearted, and I'm going to concede. No, no, no. I know the subjects are not going to be more lighthearted. It's just not going to be something that's going to have us going to bed, going, you know. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, everybody doesn't live in the same reality. So if you came from a family that was able to take care of all of your, your wants and your needs and get you a, a firm start into your adulthood, um, isn't that what we would all want for our children, technically? So that's how he grew up. And his perception is skewed accordingly. You know, somebody would have had to expose him or he would have had the natural had to have the natural curiosity, which isn't a sign to everybody, to be able to to really see past his obvious, right? To him. This is what you should do. This is what should happen. And the fact that it didn't happen for you, oh, that's news to me. What did your family do wrong? <laughs> and so and that's, and, yeah, and that kind of what the part that kind of throws me is that I got a, I got one that's um, later on. I may actually go ahead and play it next. Is I don't want, I, of course, living in a different time, hate the idea that well, you know, my parents actually paid for this, 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 because they wanted me to have a better life. So then that kind of rose to, so why do your parents not want you to have a better life? And it's like, well, that's, something, that's not what I'm that sorry. means, man. That's not what this means. That's not what it means to you. But to someone who doesn't have any educational background in this particular area, it's a blind spot. This is why we have a lot of problems with conservatives. They don't have a perception of anyone who's lived different than they have. So if you've lived different from them and it wasn't to the betterment, then something was wrong with your family. Right. They don't they struggle with seeing a larger context. It, it just they just do. Nobody taught him. So well, I feel you. Like, I wouldn't have to sit here and be like, look, man, blah, 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 da, 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 da. You ain't going to hear nothing I'm saying. No way. But, you know, but the reality is, some folks just ain't there, bro. Anna, you got I think he has, I think he has said before really perfectly that. A lot of people have moralized wealth or poverty more so. The, if we haven't pulled ourselves up by bootstraps or whatever, we just ain't working hard enough. We, I, I grew up with that sentiment all around me. Um, so... 80s and 90s in a, a diverse uh, Long Island community, but um, it was it was a middle class. It was right next to where uh, all the kids have pools, kind of thing. I did not. Um, you know, I recognize I had a very privileged, pri privileged, sorry, it's been a day. I had a very privileged childhood. Um, it was when I was 
hit with a chronic illness at 18 and couldn't go out and work, do that American dream. And, you know, it's when you see both sides because I did I my parents took me around and we we saw people from all over we had I love the toys for tots drives that we had we had some pretty spectacular events in New York City and I guess another privilege. I was able to get to that. Um, and I got to know all kinds of people. And, you know, it's just... I recognize why you're saying let's go a little less um deep yeah um the, the black american history of the the 60s through now but you know that i'm still going to ask questions you know Pius is still going to put something in there you know tracy's going to add Oh, you know, you know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I know. Theus won't be adding as much as he usually does because I believe that I, one, talk too long, too much, and two, people aren't really hearing what's being said. I mean, I mean, I grant it. Now, you guys do listen, and I appreciate that. But it's just exhausting. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the most tiring thing for me, and no, no offense to you, bro, most tiring thing for me is when I hear other black people say that our history is depressing or it's tiring. That 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 hurts me because I, I enjoy looking at these things, I guess, because I look at it from, from a slightly different point of view. But that is the predominant uh, feeling because it is a lot of pain, you know, in, in our story. But. It's, it's not our fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like I, I refuse to take that on me. You know, I want the folks who, who inflict the pain to be tired of it. Not not us. But I feel you. I get it. I get it all the way around. But you know, I I um I don't know, I've been doing a lot of soul searching and um yeah, I just I don't know. I don't know where I fit with certain things anymore. So I'm just trying to be a little less rambunctious <laughs> on certain topics. I think I guess, and I'm not saying that you said it, I said this. I know that's a long tongue tip twister. When it comes to black history, I know what we're going to get into. And I knew it exactly what we was going to get into because I sat there and said, I am not going to do the cookie cutter black history that we learned throughout the school system that was whitewashed for not knowledge base. Well, not only for knowledge base, but for Disney sake to not rile up the minorities in this school, in my classroom or whatever. I'm not going to do that because it is history. We need to know this stuff. And I do mean we need to know it. If people don't want to hear it, cool. Glad you watched the video. You can go live your little happy life and knock yourself out. Because if you're not even paying attention to this, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other stuff you're not paying attention to. And the point of holding the conversation with you is null and void in a way because I have better things to do. But on this show, with this panel, you're going to get the truth 
You're going to get the uprising. You're going to get the noise. You ain't got to watch. Trust me. YouTube has billions of videos on. Billions. So you ain't got to come on here and tell us how your feelings was hurt. And that's the long time ago. And everything. Hey, knock yourself out, buddy. Apparently you didn't have nothing to do for lunch. But you chose my video and you watched my video and you listened to us talk. Like I said, the numbers are showing it. People are watching. Now, put that to the side, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt how far my mental health can go doing these videos week after week after week after week. And when I get to the point where after videos, I'm sleeping later and later because I am so pissed off and so angry and so frustrated, not only because of what happened to our people, but the sake, for the same sake of listening to the same long time ago. Wasn't that big of a deal? Fake news. Anecdotal evidence that it even ever happened. I, I, I know my mind. I know my know. mind. And this is a journey. This is not a race. And I'm going to be in this for the, the long haul. I'm only about to be 51. I want to be doing this well into my 70s. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let anybody mess up my mind ahead of schedule. So, yeah, you watching the videos. And all I can think of to myself is, yeah, I, I probably got 10 people watching the videos and going, oh, that's BS and everything else. But I promise you, in the back of my mind, I always got that one person that watched that video and went, oh, I didn't know that. That's pretty bad. Let me learn more. And I'm after that one person. So that's my reasoning, my excuse whatever these videos that i'm showing today is sort of like not that far off the situation and anna you hit it right right on the deal pull yourself up by the bootstraps you didn't work hard enough been here then we did hear that pretty much since we, we was freed You're in the position that you're in, even though we don't put so many obstacles in your way that you can't overachieve, overcome. And if you're in the position that you're in because you didn't work hard enough, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, yada, yada, yada. We're still here. See, there's day. that one guy who did it. <clears throat> yeah, that one guy that did it. That, so that one guy. Can it, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that one guy that did it is actually trying to tell his people, if I can do it, you can do it. Because he's part of the system. Exactly. So, For those some of these didn't videos see it. are actually going to cross over. Some of these videos is actually going to cross over. I didn't think about it until now, until Anna said, pull yourself up by the bootstrap. Yeah. Some of these videos, I'm sure, may have a crossover to what we've been talking about for the last month. In disability, there are certain frameworks that keep us poor and dependent upon the health care that we get and the in my case nine hundred dollars a month average and it's just just barely enough to put a a fair, fair one of the dark rent sorry no, I'm sorry. I, when I had my child by myself, I asked the government. Not, I didn't have her. I was taking care of you, smart little. When I was taking <laughs> care of my child by myself. Um, well, the we can get screenshots of this space sometimes. They just listen too closely. When I was... Uh, <laughs> He does. He catches stuff. This is like, what? Um, 
the only thing I asked the government for ever was child, uh, not child care, was um, health benefits for my daughter, not me. I'm taking this. I'm taking the leap that if something happened to me, oh well, but at least my child would take be taken care of. They literally looked at me making a little above a um, little above wages then and said, You make too much money. I'm like, What do you mean I make too much money? Like, yeah, you, you make too much money. I, I said, Well, how much money do I have to help to get child care and health insurance for my child? Uh, we got to be a little lower, like 200 or blah, blah. I said, so, in other words, so if I was unemployed, I could get it? The lady looked me straight in the face and went, pretty much, yeah. <clears throat> I was like. You really want to really wow. look behind the, the curtain? I mean, it all blends in together. One, you have the sexism of it. Since you're a male, there's not a lot of support systems that are out there for you. Yeah. What you'll hear, though, if you say this in the wrong circles, is there'll be a social worker in the crowd and they'll pop their head up and they'll say that men are eligible for everything that women are. You use a lie. Uh, maybe that's written somewhere. But are you telling me all the men? Is it, when you roll by the homeless encampments, that's all ego while they out there? That's why that is? Oh, OK. Uh, reason why when you look at the hiring classes is it's overwhelmingly female that so that's that's just you guys not wanting to go 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 to work See, it's that's that piece then you get into the ableist argument right because there's a problem with your limb you can't get a job doing something that really requires nothing but your brain and your mouth because you have a problem with your leg you can't get a job that will let you sit down and use your arms. Because if one, if we did do that, we'd have to actually do some form of accommodations. Now, the law says we have to do accommodations, but it, I can avoid having to do accommodations if I just hire somebody who doesn't need accommodation. Right. <laughs> and then if you are on if you are in a serious health situation especially a chronic health situation there's going to be more time you need off work there's going to be more expensive health care like you're going to be a bigger draw on the group health plan you're gonna maybe have an incident at work occasionally right all these things come in so now you become less hireable because once I, once I hire you, I can't fire you. Because there's too many things that get in the way of me being able to fire you. You can start hiding behind things. You could, you could legitimately not be working good, or you could be working as your best, and it's still not what we need, and I can't get rid of you. So it's better to just not let you in the door. So you got ableism that's sitting out there doing that. You got the classic racism that sits out there. Please don't be a black or Hispanic male, that, especially a black male, because we can't pass for nothing else, right? <laughs> you just, you a black male. It's, we can, ain't nobody confusing you for Javier. They just not, okay? Even if you are Latino, you are gonna be mixed with me, okay? But if you're a passing Latino, then maybe you can play a different angle of the game, but now you're forced to deny who you are in order to, ex to, to exist in an environment. So that's a level of abuse. It, when you really get to looking at this stuff, man, it gets so horrible. But at the base of it, and this will be my one rant for the night, folks. At the base of it, it, it is. At the base of it, <laughs> it's the commodity. It's the commoditization of your life. If you cannot generate financial value into the system, then you cannot appreciate and value to said system. Therefore, you are a liability and liabilities have to be managed out so that assets can appreciate up. And that's how it shakes out all the way around the board. We turn your race into a commodity factor 
and we decide how much of a liability your race is, how much of a liability your gender is, how much of a liability your able, your, your ability, your abilities, your physical or mental abilities are. We put all that into the machine. The machine kicks out what level of value you can push back into the system. And if that value is too low, we'll just either, we'll just, whatever happens to you happen. <laughs> Let God sort it out. And, and they move on. And rant over. For anybody right now who's new to the show, who's been watching the show for a long time or new to the show, you notice what Thea said that he's not going to talk longer and he's going to keep his stuff closed and everything else. You notice that I didn't say a word because then it wouldn't be Thea's. And I know Thea's can't help it. It has to come out. It has to come out. It's like he's sitting there saying, I'm not going to be black anymore. Sure you're not. Yeah, I'll go that far. I went that far with it. Yeah, I went that far with it. I went that far. I'm not taking nothing back. I went that far with it. You are who you are. If you are who you are, you're going to be who you're going to be. And that's why I love you. So stop changing. Or stop sitting in the dark and thinking of stuff and trying to change your personality or whatever it was that you... My heater's on. My heater's <coughs> on. I don't know how to turn it off because I'm in a hotel. I can't control those things even if I did. Two stories. <laughs> I, get it and I appreciate it, but I appreciate hearing when you go off about something you do know about. It's yeah, illuminating. Well, I said, why would I'm, I'm just going to not say much. I'm just going to what? It's called growth, Marlon. Yes. Because I receive feedback and I try to take feedback. And while I struggle with it sometimes, I am always trying to get it. And when people that I care for and I care about have a com have a common concern, which is that sometimes I make them feel as though they are not able to be in a conversation with me. And that's not, I'm not talking about nobody on this panel, I'm talking about in my personal life. Oh. I have to learn that and adjust to it. So that's where some of this comes from. And this is what I say. You adjust to it. To them. On this show, <laughs> you be you. So you have to adjust now. To them, you give them three sentences. For this show, you be theist. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry that some people can't take but three, four sentences at a time. Nothing wrong with it. I get it. You know, whatever. But for this show, you be you. And I was this. You literally said nobody on this panel said anything. That's just the people on the outside. So you handle those people on the outside. You give them a nice little short, you know. Three word sentence, break them down. You know, they may be the people that you have to text, like sit it, sit it, sit, sit it, text, sit it, text, sit it, text, so they can read at their own speed. But for this show, I don't want any changes. I just don't. I'm going to be right back. I have got to get this heat turned <laughs> off. I'm just. All right, well, I'm just going to head to the next video, so you can just listen in. So the next video is two in one. He's not going to turn that heat off. Trust me, I've been in so many hotels. Uh, if you turn it down, you freeze. If you turn it up, you burn it up. So whatever. This is two stories in one, so kind of try to pay attention because it's... um. It flip flops, but the stories is the same. The guy just rambles so much. And again, this is what I warn you, don't look at the video, just listen. My dad just died about a month ago. My company gave me four days unpaid off. I was really close to my father, so this was hard for me to deal with. My paycheck was enough to pay bills, but I had to buy my groceries on credit card to get by. 
My boss's brother-in-law died the following week. All he talks about is how hard this is on his wife. Between the stress of her brother dying and the Reno on their million-dollar cabin, he's taking his whole family to Hawaii for 10 days this month to try and deal with their grief. Meanwhile, I'm pricing urns out on Amazon to try to save money, trying to sell my dad's tools to help my mom, working full-time, and taking care of a toddler. It didn't happen to me personally, but I've got an extremely similar story. I used to work with an extremely competent and really nice supervisor, we'll call her Sally, who didn't show up for work one day. Our boss Matt, who was also the owner, wanted to terminate Sally immediately until it came out that her husband died in a really violent freak accident. Cooler heads prevail. Matt backs off as I tell him that I can cover for Sally for as long as she needs. About two weeks pass, and in spite of Sally checking in every so often and being in the bereavement guidelines, Matt starts interrogating people, asking when Sally's returning, complaining that her coming in to collect a paycheck, side story Matt didn't believe in direct deposit, was really unprofessional given how long she'd been gone. He even starts quietly asking people how it would look if he went ahead and replaced Sally. Long story short, Sally ended up returning, like, immediately after the funeral was concluded. In my opinion, Matt indirectly pressured her to return. Three months later, Matt's dog died. Don't get me wrong, he was a gentle, adorable English bulldog that Matt would bring every so often, but he was also old and extremely sick, and Matt had about six months' warning that his dog would pass away. Matt was utterly devastated, like ashes and sackcloth forlorn. Not only does he completely fall off the radar for a month, but he only resurfaced to have a meeting where he explains that he was headed to Hawaii to recenter, and I crap you not, looks Sally dead in the eyes and tells her that she should understand. I'm sorry. Tracy? This is the first time I talked. <clears throat> yep. I didn't say anything last second, and I really wanted to jump in there, but I was. I'll let that segment go. Is this idiot out of his dang gone ever loving mind? If compassion was a person, he would not be it, sir. Charles, husband or father or person died, and you tell my yo dog. Yes, I get it. Some people they love their animals. Blah 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 blah. But you go, mm -mm. no, 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 I want to say something so bad. No, 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 no. A month, a month. Somebody should have been pressuring you to come back to work a month. What's wrong with people? <laughs> so here's my deal. This is my my definition of out of touch. I know there are people who love their pets just like, if not more than people. Been growing up with people a long time, I can understand. But don't ever look at a widow that you pretty much harass the whole time to come back to work. She finally comes back to work right after the funeral. Your dog died and your statement is I get to fly to Hawaii to center myself widow you should understand and keep working because my question to you was when did she get to take time to center without being harassed by you without the fear of losing her job since you know you was asking around the office would it look bad you knew it was going to look bad you wouldn't have asked people who were really out of it would not have asked but then again Maybe I'm thinking more nicely than I should be. You probably was asking more on the favor of would this look illegal? Would this get me in trouble more than would it look bad if I did it? But I'm giving you the benefit of a doubt. 
He's the kind of person you hope something bad happens to him. You be like, okay, let, let's just wait. Yeah, I know I shouldn't say that, but it, he's he's just he's just ready for the pickings. Like, you don't want anything bad to happen to people, but something did happen to you, you'd be like, oh, well, remember when you did the, 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 dude, you looked her in the face and said you should understand. No, she shouldn't. She lost a husband. You lost a dog. I know you loved your dog, but they're not the same. They're not the same. Anna? And I have made everybody mad. You touched everybody differently. And yep. hey, I had an employer tell me to snap out of it that my mother died. I was like, you. What? What? What you st- What? Yeah. Snap out of it. Snap get over it. it. Get it's, over it. It's, it's been, been, it's been long ago. enough. Yeah, it's been twenty years. Guess what? I still ain't over it. How about that? I told you what my mom said about that. The cold. It, it comes into this. This too. Especially the ones who try to, um, you know, my such and such died and it didn't take me long to get over it. It's, it's the equivalent of, wow, it's really cold out here. It ain't cold. This, is, this ain't cold. This ain't really cold. You know what? You not feeling cold doesn't make me warmer. So you getting over the death of somebody ain't going to all of a sudden make me get over the death of who I'm with. That ain't how this works. You may have a different experience than I have. You may not even really care about the person that died. How I know? People say some of the dumbest things. It's like, shut up. If you can't say nothing, just don't say anything. Just keep your mouth shut and keep those stupid thoughts in your head. Don't say them. You got anything, Theus? You're you know me. Uh, hold on. I mean, gotta, gotta do something real quick. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, dude was an asshole. Um, he has no emotional IQ. Okay, but he's that type of person, and so for he's one of those people that if it's not him, he can't relate to it, and then when it is him, he expects everybody to be able to relate to it. So that's that's the type of person you're dealing with, and then. He's a leader. He's an owner, boss, whatever he is. He's at whatever level where he can dictate his schedule. So he gets certain perks with his position. Now, I'm not going to tell him not to use his perks. Use your perks. You're in that role. But the problem is how you then turn around and look at other people and judge them who don't even have your perks. Right. And then about the the dog thing. Okay, I love dogs. Um, I love my dog like he was my own kid, but it wasn't my kid. It was my dog. Okay, so there is a distinction, but it's above just a pet, right? So, you know, I, I can I can see how devastating it can be. Um, no, whether it was you knew it was coming or if it happened suddenly, that's still a, a personality because each pet has a personality. That personality is gone, right? So the problem here isn't that he was devastated by losing his dog. The problem here was that he was devastated by losing his dog, but it didn't click to him that the devastation this woman must be feeling for losing her husband must be even greater. And I need to relate to that and show her my empathy and appreciation with every way I can, even if it's just verbal. And that's all I had. Are you writing this stuff down now? I had a two minute timer timer. I did good. I did that at like a minute forty. <laughs> you know what? I don't even care no more. Do you dude? I don't even care no more. 
I just don't even care no more. You're not supportive on my road of recovery. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, my God. Feeding awesome. the homeless. Awesome. Thank oh, you. Courage, yo. Feeding the homeless. Anytime someone says, why did they throw that away? It could have been donated to a homeless person when referring to extremely expired or broken items. While cleaning out my parents' house before they moved, I emptied their fridge and pantry and separated out the expired stuff. My dad went through and gathered most of the food into a donation box and then scooped in all the expired food as well. Some of this stuff was years expired and even opened. My partner and I kept trying to remove it and eventually it came down to an argument where my dad insisted that the homeless would take whatever they could get. My dad had never had the experience of going hungry while my partner had volunteered at food banks in the past. He was peed that my dad was treating homeless people as less than human and insisting they should be grateful to eat his garbage. Once my parents had left, I donated the expired food to the garbage can. If my dad was so concerned about wasting it, he should have either used it or donated it years ago when it was still safe to eat. I I'll let Diaz go first since he's putting himself on a two-minute time right here. <coughs> you know, I'm actually going to go off the beaten path here because I think this is just obvious. Uh, I mean, this is what, Tone Deaf Sunday, I guess is what we're going with. But um, the thing I'm going to go off the path with is like in the beginning of the segment, he said something to the effect of um, there are homeless people who would like to have this food or – you know, it's like you doing this, but that could have been used for that over there. And that to me is like the most in, insulting, low energy deflection that people just love to use. Right. It, it's a way to kill a conversation or a discussion. Right. It, it's it. What do we it's going to be the homeless. It's going to be veterans. It's going to be children. Um, and it's going to be the elderly, right? Name your subject. We'll pull one of them, dust them off of the shelf and say, well, you could have taken care of them instead of doing that. And that just is so irksome to me because what is your initiative to help that group before we had this conversation, right? What, what were you doing to help the veterans directly before we could even have a conversation about throwing away food or sending money, oh no, sending money to another country like Ukraine or something? What were you doing Sorry, to help this group you care so much about? And usually the answer is nothing. <laughs> you might be talking about it, but you ain't did nothing. You ain't raised a dollar. You ain't knocked on a door. But at the moment that it's, it's, it's convenient for you, now is well, you know, this could have gone to some homeless people. Well, you know what else could go to homeless people? A fresh loaf of bread? You know? <laughs> um, uh, the, the food, when you bought groceries, you could have bought two of a few of those things and gave him one of those away at the time that you bought it. You know, it's, so it's just one of those things that just kind of gets my proverbial goat. This is no more than people who quite honestly don't give... Uh, you try to work on your, your talk and I'm trying to work on my cousin, so... These are people who don't give a rat's butt about the down and trotted until it comes to a situation like this. They're cleaning out the refrigerator. They're cleaning out the closet. They cleaning out it, but it's stuff like that. And even to this, even to this moment, I can still look them dead in the face and go, "You know what? You still don't give a rat's butt about them. This is just your moment to feel good about yourself at the very <coughs> least one time." At the worst case scenario, you look at it for a tax write-off. Don't they call it like virtue signaling or something like that? I don't know if that's the right application of the term, but I, I think it is. But it, 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 it's just one of those things where you you haven't felt good about yourself in a long time, 
and the great moment of you cleaning out your first of all, dude, because okay, I don't know anybody like this. I mean, we throw leftovers away. I got it. If you got enough inspired stuff in your refrigerator in your pantry that it can fill up a box, ew. Like, what are you doing? How is He's that a dry goods, bro. possible? Huh? Dry goods, dry goods, you can get there fast and easy. No, he said they had expired. They had expired. I know, but you can get there easy. Like, you buy it, you thought you wanted it, didn't need it, now it's in the back of the cabinet, you keep buying what you do want, next thing you know, huh? Ten years later. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I married the right one because this woman ain't gonna let nothing. She gets a whiff of something that don't smell right. It is immediately going but, out. But dry goods did give you that. And I, then if you also have a situation like I think he was saying this is his elderly parent or something. So yeah. what we don't know is like what time frame did these parents grow up? Because if they grew up in the 1930s, 40s era they were so deathly afraid of ever running out again that they would have not just what's in the house they'd have stuff in the thing on garage stuff in the shed i mean that meant i mean i'm not trying to make an excuse for that piece of it but i am saying that's how that part can occur you know um his his blindness to those who have less is unfortunate but i would also say the partner is rightfully indignant but so you volunteered the soup kitchen sometimes does that make you better than your grandfather no just means you're different so give give some grace <laughs> you know i mean i don't know whatever i'm overthinking it because that's what i do sorry but speaking yeah. of what Parker and learning was doing, is the same thing, clothing. Care system is. When I used to help a charity, we'd get people donating literal rags, torn t-shirts, and ruined trousers for the homeless, saying, it's good for somebody. No, no, it's not. These are worse than the clothes they are currently wearing. Why do some people think homeless people want junk? Don't they deserve something? So it's the same thing. It's and, um, and, pa and Parker and um, Learn Life said it was worse donated expired food to a food bank or do donating dirty clothes to Goodwill. They're both equal. Dirty, it, it, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Expired food is worse. The expired food will make you sick and go to the hospital. Dirty clothes, you can still, I mean, as a person that shops at the Goodwill, I wash everything before I wear it. So you can still. Even though oh, that's trifling, you trifling and you donate dirty clothes to the Goodwill, you could still ideally, you know, wash I, I them. I that one did. But yeah, it, some, I was saying some places do have their wash and dry in the back, and they wash it. Me personally, I even if I bought new clothes, I wash them. Before I put uh, I'm them on. washing them like nah. And I'm sorry. No, I, don't I, I only wash good. I don't wash my brand new clothes most times. I wash my I wash my brand, brand new. Clothes. I'll be honest. That's people who. Wash. Let me try this on. No, I don't like it. And put, yep, they put it back it and they right all back. funky. Yep, that. Yep. Yeah, I used to work at Macy's. Oh, that would be so. They wear that men would wear that heavy cologne, and then it'd be on the clothes. Ooh, ooh. He doesn't know that food banks throw any expired food that doesn't get do that gets donated to them. So they even do if all he the was time. To, um, so even if he was to donate, they gonna donate. throw it away. But They're gonna throw guy, it away. Yeah, this guy is a perfect example of his lips, and I'm paraphrasing what the Bible says, but his lips say he wants help, but his heart is far from helping. You don't give people expired food. You don't do well, that. That can make them sick. Literally sick. But but you have to think, but and I'm not taking up for him. I'm just thinking of a thought process. When you're hungry, you're hungry. It's better to have something than nothing at all. Marlon, why? That does I, not excuse you giving somebody your nope, expired food. 
You'd be uh, better off giving them animal food. You would almost be better off just giving them animal food. Yeah, and there been some times when you were broke enough. That was you a know, lot of animal people. Animal food is way more expensive than people food. I'll take your word for it. Last video before the hour, just to go out on a. I don't know. I don't know if y'all gonna laugh at it or get pissed off because this is a weird, weird day with people putting themselves on two minute timers and uh, so I don't know which way this video. Say is my going. name, Marlon. Say my name. <laughs> See, you should have sung it. Eight. I attend a typical rich kids high school as one of the non-rich kids, at least to the standards of the environment I was in. My family was solidly middle class. The amount of asinine, delusional crap I heard on the daily made my skin crawl sometimes. When my ex-friend turned 16, her parents gave her one of their beamers. The thing was maybe five years old. She nonstop complained at the fact her parents had the audacity to give her a used car instead of buying her the new Audi she wanted. One day she was on another diatribe about how much her parents sucked for giving her a hand-me-down car, and I snapped and told her that she should be grateful her parents had the mean to give her her own car in the first place let alone a luxury vehicle. Her response? Well, it isn't my problem your parents don't work hard enough. I was a peasant who shared one of my parents' cars and took the bus. Sarcasm. Why are people so stupid? Why? Why are people so stupid? Well, here's you the deal. Here's the deal. Literally, because you don't know any better. First of all, let's put it all. This is is. But she's step. probably been spoiled her whole life. Let me let me let me back off. That and and, and I even go back to that. She don't even think she's spoiled, and she probably feel like she ain't spoiled. Like she's entitled her. to it. Yeah, she's it's sixteen. You're used to this. Yeah, oh, I'm, Beamer. I'm upset. I'm upset. Please give me yeah, that five year old Beamer. Please give me your five year old Beamer. I will take it. I will take care of the car. Meanwhile, you're not coming up on it. You're not coming up in our world. The 16 year old girl is walking around looking at other 16 year old girls whose parents promised them a brand new car of your choice, of their choice. And she feels less than because you couldn't buy her a brand new car. You gave her a used car, regardless of what it was. Because this is the life she grew up in. These people do not live in the same world. I mean, for real, I mean, in the they human really ecosystem, you have ants, you have turkeys, you got eagles, like, in the <laughs> human realm, we inhabit different levels of experience. And the eagle does not relate to the ant. <laughs> it just doesn't. So... You ain't got no money. Your family ain't got no money. You, your options are different. You, you graduate high school first. It's a mad, It's a miracle if you graduate high school. If in some situations, because where you're at, nobody graduates. And the few people who do graduate, they got a they got a, a high school diploma. You got the dropout over here. They both live the same jacked up life right in front of you. So the value of a high school diploma in the toilet, going to college. How do I even think about going to college? I don't know anybody who's been to college. The few who did go to college ain't been back since they left college. Yeah, so, like, so that's like that's the reality many of us might be able to relate to, even if it's not our direct experience. We're not too far off of it, but we can probably relate to that. But you move out a few levels, third generation family of doctors. Third generation family of business owners, right? That to be poor in their social circle is to not be able to get membership at the elite country club. You at you at the country club, you're not at that country club. All things become relative. Yeah, so plus yeah. Affordable membership, it, it, fifty-six dollars a month. We be it's how you grow up. I do it, it's how you grow up and it's what you're exposed to, you know, and I, I'm not saying that these people are wrong. They just, well, no, they are kind of wrong, I mean, but they, they're, they're in, wrong in the, because of this, the, their environment. In a greater scheme of things, they're wrong, but they're wrong 
by our perspective because we live on the outside world and it's hard for them to understand it because again you know i say put her in trans public transportation for two hours she'll be so happy she will run wait a minute car. but that's the problem tracy why would you do that wait a minute that's the problem Teacher tracy who who should make her do that her parents well it's obviously her, her, her parents, parents fault. they the ones that spoiled her that is they fault really if you think about it but is it bad? Is she in a? Is she bad for this? Really? Like, take our own personal experience out of it, where no one really gave us anything like that. Now, me, okay. There are people who look at how I came up in my teenage years and think I had it so great, which I did. I had a good childhood. So when I was seventeen, my parents gave me my truck. I didn't pay no car note. I ain't pay no insurance. I just took my butt to work and brought my back, my butt home. That was for me. That was something my parents were able to do for me. And compared to a lot of my peers, I was spoiled. Right. This is a direct parallel to this young lady that instead of her getting a new like I work in the area where when I used to work for the bank, these folks got money. OK, <laughs> so their kids would graduate and when well, they're not graduate, their kids would turn 16 and their gift would be a brand new current year Jeep Wrangler or uh, Mercedes or BMW, like legit. That's what they do out here. So in that world, you got a Mercedes, but you got a hand-me-down. So now you're not at the same level of your little peers, right? It's it's all relative to where you're at. And, and I don't even think that it's a, it's not bad in and of itself, it's just bad in a larger construct. When you have the means to travel and to see that things are different in the world, I would hope you would take that take that journey, that learning journey. The only thing that I will say that's bad about this girl, and I would hope that she would outgrow it, and I'm, I don't, I don't know that much about the parents, so I don't know if she would or would not. But the fact that she did go right back to pull yourself up by the bootstraps mentality, where she said, "It's not my fault. Your parents did not work hard enough." They need parents now, probably work for her parents. What is she talking about? See? And I, like I said, it depends on the parents because if a, there are some parents who would listen to that and go, yep, she may literally got the idea from a parent. There are some other parents that's going to be a little shocked and go, what the hell did you just say to somebody else? Oh, no, 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 no. You are not going to use our hard work to to put down somebody else like you did something spectacular like everything you got in this world you earned so we, we but in a lot of conservative circles that is literally how they are brought up yeah and I'm then you look at you. some of the young and you look at some of the young people nowadays just period just the young people where they think that they should be able to start life where they grew up like um, no, your parents put in 10, 15 years before you were born to get you where you started. And then they work for the next 16 years to get you to where you are at right now. When you move out, you start over. I mean, we're going to give you a boost, <laughs> but that's not how these kids think. These, they, these kids really do think that they came from this, they should walk right into that. And 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 is that is that wrong? I don't know. I don't know. Cause then it gets start you start getting into the moralization of work again once you start doing that. So but if you grew up country club princess and your world is country club world, then I would think that it just makes sense that what you think is normal is not gonna be what I think is normal. All right. That is our first hour. Wow, what did we do? Three videos, four videos. Oh, amazing what you can do when I'm less talkative. Theus, learn life. Tomás no está en cuenta, no comprendo, señor. 
he's giving you a great i'm just going to pretend like i have no idea what you just said because well i'm not pretending i have no idea what you just said but learn life gave a great perspective this is a safe space <coughs> when, you're, when you're here you be you you go out this is me you, you Okay, I tell you what, here's the funny thing about it. What if I put you, what if I put you on a two minute timer? What if I say it that's okay? Different. No, why? Because that's imposed. That's the difference between separation and segregation. One is imposed, one is chosen. One is a personal path that you're trying to walk down, the other one is an aisle that's been designated for you. Lean on me. We're going to go ahead and close out first hour. So we're going to go on into our second hour with Real or Not, Am I the A Hole? And of course, Foxy's videos of the week. Stay tuned. Three minute break, reboot, refresh, and we'll be right back.
are back. And as always, before we even get started, let's pay them bills. Please do not forget to go to Patreon.com, a better Tracy Media page. Help Tracy in all of her endeavors. Please do not forget to go to Patreon.com forward slash Complex Mind. Help Theas in all of his endeavors. Please do not forget to go to Patreon.com forward slash Radical Truth to Power. Exactly the way it's spelled, capital R, capital T, capital T, capital P. Help, help me in all of my endeavors. Please do not forget to go to Anna Hart's website, Borelli, etc.com. Learn something that you didn't think you need to know, but you should. And as always, if you want to drop me a line, you can go to radtp at outlook.com. That's R-A-D-T-P at outlook.com. <sighs> Not even going to say anything because I'll mess it up. Real or nah. So this real or nah is actually one of the few things that me and Foxy disagreed on. But it's not the disagreement that you think. We will tell you at the end after everybody gives their answer. Manager, how do I tell a former employee that he can't visit us weekly? I'm a senior director for a group of highly skilled, experienced employees. Everyone is at a high level in this large organization, and they're primarily self-directed while I set organizational strategy and ensure everyone has resources. We had a very kind and beloved employee, Frank, retire in 2021. He was very isolated during COVID and had a hard time with the transition to retirement. He feels comfortable resuming activities now, and one of those activities is stopping by our office once a week to chat. We're a very relaxed office, so most days there's only a small handful of people here. But Frank will sit down and chat with whoever's there for 30 to 40 minutes and then move on to the next person. We aren't a public-facing office, so it's unusual to have someone visit to hang out. But even though everyone's busy, it's not completely unheard of that someone would have a 30-minute chat catching up with an old colleague or client. And everyone can manage their own time, so a break for a midday chat is welcome, on occasion. However, this has been going on for months, and I'm hearing people make offhand comments about Frank's visits. I told everyone that they should feel okay saying, it's a busy day, no time to talk. But everyone genuinely does care about Frank, and it seems like these visits are a lifeline for him. I tried inviting him to an after-hours happy hour to set the tone that he's welcome to socialize with us, but at a less disruptive time, but the visits haven't stopped. I was going to directly talk to him about the need to stop or drastically cut down on visiting, but when I mentioned it to the other two directors, they thought that was really harsh, and I'm having trouble coming up with the right words to use with Frank, since the usual things a manager would say don't work with a team that's self-directed. Should I just ignore this perceived problem and leave it up to everyone if they want to chat? And then, several months later, OP posted an update. I want to give a very big thank you to the commenters who suggested volunteer work. I don't know why that hadn't occurred to me, since my aunt founded and ran a nonprofit near and dear to me. The next week when Frank came in, I saw two people run in the other direction, and I decided to address it. I invited Frank to lunch, and unprompted, he shared that he was really at loose ends and didn't know how to spend his time. I brought up volunteering, and he said that he didn't know how to find a place to volunteer. How do you even apply, and who would you want to help? I said, everyone. Everyone wants people who have unlimited daytime availability. I gave him my aunt's number then and there, and sent her a text to expect his call. He called the next day, and by the following week, he was a full-time fixture there. At Thanksgiving, I asked my aunt how Frank was doing, and she gushed about his hard work pitching in wherever. His positivity, the ideas he was bringing to the table, she loved Frank. New Year's rolls around, and we have another family get-together, and who walks in but Frank? He and my aunt are in a relationship! Aw, that's so sweet! They're looking at moving in together. 
They're both kind of uh, on marriage, but we'll see. The office has been getting a break from Frank, but now I might be getting much more of him. I don't know if this website has been responsible for a love match before, but I'm crediting this one to you and the commenters for this kismet. Gonna go with a nah, but you know what would have been really cool since this is like, it seems like a pretty cool office. Um, it's, it's kind of like mine in a way, even though mine gets on my nerves right now. But that's another thing. Um, the flexibility and the freedom thing. But if it's a small business construct with that level of flexibility, you all like Frank, but you can't have him just dawdling around. You don't want to create a new security policy because then that would be obvious why you did it. Why wouldn't you start a volunteer or social focus lane for your company? So now your company can funnel some of this excess funds into the charity arm, get a tax deduction, get positive press, got somebody you already know and trust in the role. There you go. But I also like the angle they win as well. I, I like creating opportunities. So that was pretty cool. Even if it was made up. Okay. So I the had the same thought. Created why did, why wasn't it treated, but like I I was with them all up until the and then they got in the relationship and yeah. Yeah. So real or not, Anna? Nah. Tracy, and you on mute before you say something. This mess ain't real. There's no way this is real. First of all, if Frank had kept coming around the office, somebody would have told him, hey, Frank, on a hobby. Second of all, the volunteer thing, okay, that could have been real, but I'm with Anna. They lost me as soon as he and my honor and a relationship, and they're on the marriage, but we'll see. No, no, no. Okay. So, I'll bring it back up in a second. So, I won. Foxy said everybody would disagree except Anna. I said everybody would disagree. But neither one of you won because all three of us agree. I don't understand. I think we're all no. on the same page. The only person she said that would disagree the only people that would say was fake was Diaz and Tracy. I said Diaz, Tracy, and Anna would say nah to the whole story. And Anna said nah. She thought I would say it was real. You, she thought you would say it was real. You just loved me at the very end. <laughs> it was If they hadn't put that in part, I might have believed it, but then no, I wouldn't have. Because they would have told him, hey, look, Frank, you need to get a hobby. You can't be coming around here every single day like this. Stop it. Or every week or whenever it was, he was dropping by. And Adam, uh, honest, for me, it was the end. Uh, the, the, for me, it was the end. Adam, the end um, was just uh, gravy on the mashed potatoes. This was just like, come on. <laughs> that one was throwing Foxy at him because you was like, you was really giving it to it. It is all, oh, it was so sweet. And then at the very minute, you went, Nah, this ain't really. <laughs> what? That but wait, so there's I, more. Oh, no, there's no. There could be more. That was so weird. Yeah, could, they could be having a baby. With. He is happy now doing his new volunteer work, but he had to add, and now they're in a relationship with my aunt. LOL. What if the yeah, first part I mean, is still in the second part is fake? No, because for it, me, I'm like I, I. That's the way I, I plan to do business. So, like, if you, for those of you who aren't familiar with my Patreon setup, it doesn't have to be where I give anything to anybody. But the reason I have it set up the way I do is because I believe business should have a purpose and that I believe that whatever you're doing, you should try to help somebody. So 
in that scenario, I would like to think that if I, especially if my business is in the position to do so, I absolutely would have found something that interests Frank or something that I'm interested in and put Frank over it if he wants to do it on a pro tem purpose, right? He doesn't have to be there every day. But um, absolutely, I just think that's how business should be done. Hey, and so Walmart he was hiring. with me. No. So not Tracy's approach. No. Uh, <laughs> but he could be right there right. greeting people as they come in. He get to meet different people. So I, and the I don't believe agree really with me. They was running from him. I mean, the whole story is fake. But they was running from him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 um, I get that point, yeah. though, because you kind of... you. You got to realize if this was a a a hole, which is few and far between, honestly. I mean, there are some people who just, I'm so glad that you retired and I'm never have to see you again. And they know they a holes and they don't want to see you either. So this ain't gonna happen. Or the the majority of the time is people who is just, man, you know, we ain't close personal friends. We ain't best buddies, but you know, we don't want nothing to happen to you. I'm cool with you. If I see you, I say hey and everything. Those are the ones who, if they keep coming in all the time, it's kind of like, dude, we 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 not that freaking cool. So uh but I what got if work you to are. do. But then that's my that's, third one. The third yeah, one is the guy one. who's just like Frank, the most popular, the most kind, the most sweet, the most sincere. The one who worked his butt off the time of that he been there to the time he retired. The one who helped train some of these people, talk to them after hours. They had, they had issues. He was the first to volunteer to help them get better at their job. And now he's coming. You, you know, it's kind of hard to sit there and go, dude, I'm working. It's kind of like you can't do that to the guy who got you and I don't even know, just to make a position. If you're you're junior staff now, when you start off as an intern, and now you junior staff, and it's like, yeah, this is the dude that got me here. It's kind of hard to go, okay, dude, I'm too busy to talk to you now. But I, if I, Frank I is interfering right with your work, you have to tell him he's interfering yeah, with your it, work. You can't it, lie it, to it, the it, man. It, it, That's it, worse. Said, I get it. It's, That's it's, worse it. in there. Oh, yeah, Frank, let's talk for an hour. No, I have a See, they pay me to do a job. See, that's what they pay me for. Yes, I did, and I still don't think that's a bad idea. He get to meet different people. He get a discount on the food. I mean, I'm just saying. Man, Tracy can be ruthless, y'all. For real. Tracy, Tracy can be straight Tracy up had... ruthless, boy. <laughs> Tracy just have you working any dog type of way. Just leave her alone. That's pretty I'm much I'm saying he, he, he likes to thing. talk to people. Alone. He likes to talk to people. So everybody comes in Walmart. He's like, hey, how you doing? Welcome to Walmart. Boom. I'm doing him a favor. No, ma'am. No. And and, and, but but then you know what's so you know what's so scary? She really feels that. She really feels she's doing them a favor by putting them in Walmart. He didn't have to work there full time. He could work there part time. I know many of retired senior citizens that get good decent social security and they still work at Walmart. Why? Because they enjoy interacting with people. Obviously, no, they need some extra money. They need some extra money. The people who the people who just enjoy being around other people, they volunteer at schools or they work at libraries or (laughs) I'm just saying he would get a check and he would get to talk to people. Obviously Frank, is set up. Obviously, Frank is set up. So it ain't even a money situation. Frank That's why I said he could, get a check. He, could, he could get a check and he gets to talk to people. I don't he see don't the downside work, He don't want to work anymore. He don't want to work anymore, Tracy. He so, doesn't want to work anymore. So here's the thing for me. Here's the thing for me. And this ain't about, I just find it. This is in the, thank you, Tracy. You know, but, um, Hey, Tracy, it's, Tracy it's, putting people in Walmarts, man. So the first part I would say is I would never send anybody to Walmart because I don't like how they treat their employees. So okay. that's Mine why I won't that even part. shop there. I won't even shop there. I can't separate it. Like I'm, that's part of my issue. Um, I, I can't separate certain things, and that 
becomes problematic for people. And I, I, I don't know how to address that. It's, just, I, it's literally how my brain is wired. But that's a whole other thing. I'll, I'll take care of that in counseling or therapy, right? <laughs> but um, I think that there's no morality to work other than the morality you bring to it. That That's the one. And then two, I just think that any work, that you set up for someone else to do, right? Because you start a, a role or a job, you create a role or a job to serve a purpose. But in creating that role or job, it should not be soul deadening, right? Like, I, I there's a there's a hole for every peg, right? Mm -hmm. So, I would love for more companies to have the mentality of hiring the right fit for the role. And when you have a role that you know is by design, just not going to be overall pleasant, making easy pathways out of it um, yeah, because so that no one has to stay in it too long. He's interfering with work. You cannot keep not telling him. You have to tell him. But that, that's a weakness of management. Yeah. Because management should have no, had a conversation with Frank. Yeah, they yeah, should be right? like, hey, Frank, you can volunteer or take my suggestion and work at Walmart. One or the other. Okay, so so Tracy would not be in any role that would have her talk to Frank. But, Elber. I would I was saying, like, I said okay. volunteer or work at Walmart. Yo. Those are two solid choices. He could be an artist. He could so volunteer at school. So here's he the could deal. drive cars and fix them. He could do a lot of stuff. So he here's can't the keep deal. We're going to hold, con hold a conversation with Frank when Tracy is at lunch because we are not going to let Tracy tells the no, truth. No and I'm not going to sit there and ever. sugarcoat it. And yep. that's why we're going to have it with Tracy goes to lunch. Sometimes Tracy the truth needs some sugar on it. Some, maybe how I was raised, but I didn't get sugarcoated truth. Well, that doesn't mean that that's how you want to put on everybody true. else. Great. We'll talk you, to you the way you. Um, you know what I'm saying? Way. So you, you want to cut dry like that? That's cool, but it ain't about you. It's about who you're interacting with. At least that's how it should be. It shouldn't be about Theus. It's about Theus's interaction with Tracy or with Anna, right? So Anna might need a little sugar on the truth, like. And some people call it sugar. I call it like decency and empathy, right? Just right. I didn't know, say don't be empathy, but I'm the, saying don't lie the, to the man. What you just said was <laughs> you got bro. you got this man going from retirement <laughs> to of all places Walmart, Target, Walmart, Macy's. I ain't sending um, nobody to Walmart. <laughs> you got a retired man to Walmart. Look, here's the deal: the dude is lonely. That's yep. pretty much all it is. That's pretty much what. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. You that's got true. him sent to the lowest form of lowest forms of community. No, people who work at Walmart, Walmart are not low. So now walk that's wrong. Tell everybody, you, hey. No, 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 no. The people at Walmart, some of them are quite low, but the thing isn't about that. The thing is, this is a gentleman who's retired from your company, and you said that these are very specialized, uh, whatever kind of role people. That means they're not your general working class people. So when you're telling them she's retired and you're like, go to Walmart, I'm you're basically Walmart, saying Macy's, Target, you teaching, fixing cars. everything you're naming. But this man was, I'm just going to create an, a, a role for him because they didn't give us this detail other than saying it's very specialized. So that, that makes me think of an engineer or an architect, right? So time for you to retire you are a highly skilled person in a very specific way i'm not sending you to walmart if i can help it i might recommend why don't you become a teacher at the community college or why don't you um maybe what do you like kids I'm giving do you like options. old people what do I'm you like i'm saying right i'm giving options you're not giving options. <laughs> I am giving all options. Your, he can make money and talk to people. people. At the at same time, point, he can greet the customers as they're walking in. He Tracy, likes to talk. Point, Obviously, he likes point, to You are talk. giving opinions. Those are not options. Those are not mm -hmm. options. Those are you, are, opinions. you are casting judgment on this man and saying, I don't you care what you do, just get out my face. He's, he's slowing up business.
Hey. So now you're hey, oh whoa welcome. whoa whoa hey. whoa. So now you are not on the side of labor. You're moving towards capitalism. That doesn't. Look, That's what, what you, you just did. You just pivoted no, from caring no, about the worker no, to no. the fact that you you're are not being productive. That to say stuff that I'm not even saying. That's what you just. No no <laughs> no no no. no. I want, to thank you. I want to thank you so much for giving me my three hundred dollars every two week paycheck because I was really lonely. He gets to now talk I'm to people. Lonely. He can talk to the shoppers as they walk in the store. Be up there talking if you want to. Walmart to come up to you and be like, um, "Bill, Bill." Um, I'm noticing that you're having a lot of conversations at the door. That's slowing people down from getting into the store. They would never so, uh, say that. So Bill, I've seen I'm gonna Walmart need you. associates hold long 30 minute conversations. I'm like, y'all still talking? I've been in the store to shop for everything and they still Bill, talk. Bill, That's we focus true. on being uh, high efficiency. Tracy, Tracy, Walmart is not high efficiency. Tracy, Tracy um, I, I don't want to say this because I don't want nobody to you know, take my words out of context. But the pandemic has slowed up enough where we're trying to get it to normalization, however you want to see that. So if the greeter at the door is holding a 30 minute conversation with guests, guess what? You should never know. Why? Because you can walk right around them and go do your shopping. How would I know I will pull Bill. I know I will pull Bill. I will have Bill in that little funky office that sits behind the cash register <laughs> and having a conversation with Bill. Because you know what, Bill? That's one customer who may not want to come consultant. back tomorrow because they he don't want to have that conversation. A, he can sell Avon. I so know. now you're telling Bill to go be a multi level marketer. Okay. I know plenty of men that sell Avon. I didn't say nothing about gender. I said about being a multi-level marketer. He can make some money on the side. He could talk to all the women because that's who mostly buys Avon and products. What if he don't want a woman? About money. He, he can help the men him. buy their makeup products. I don't ever see a man wear makeup, but hey, okay, I guess. He is not concerned about money. He is lonely. It's retirement. Why are you Get a dog. Get a cat. Have a pet. Get a hobby. You cannot Ooh, go into the brutal. workplace. The workplace. There's no. If I sit here on my job tomorrow and talk for 30 minutes to my sister, they're going to be like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be talking to our customers. That's my job. Yes. That's what I'm paying yes, for. But that's your job. You. Your job. Right. Your job is not structured the way their business is. Your job is based on volume. Are you getting the right information to the right people? Don't waste a lot of time. Make sure you're available. Keep it moving. Why right? are the employees and don't let go, the train. <laughs> go sell some life or herbal life. <laughs> Just right? Just I'm making suggestions. I don't know why y'all think this is funny. Tracy, oh. she hardcore, boy. What? I'm for telling the truth. <laughs> and I, Bill, I want when you were here, Bill, when you were here, you helped make us money. Now, Bill, you're costing us money. You got to go, Bill. I don't care what. No, I'm like, Bill, we appreciate your insightful not to be lonely, Bill. No, you don't have to be mean about it, but you have to tell them, hey, dude. I, what I just said was nicer than, hey, go work at Walmart, Walmart. Bill. And then, and then why are you teasing around what you saying? You go straight up say, Bill, you blah 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 and everything else, and you're the person that says straightforward, no sugar. That is straightforward. We no do sugar. like him, but that don't mean he got to come in every week. Once a month would be just fine. Once every other month would be even better. Just because you tell the truth doesn't mean you have to be mean when you tell the truth. I fully agree with that statement. <laughs> Sell some Bitcoin. <laughs> They're doing interesting things with stamps nowadays, Bill. Call the solution. <laughs> it would cure his loneliness. 
Because the solution at his loneliness was to go work at Wally World. <laughs> Y'all think this is funny. And see, I don't, I don't know why I back, no, come back. I don't think, think it's before. funny. I think it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> you got that. Welcome to Walmart. There are plenty of yeah. options that what, he what, has. What, what and he's is not playing? exercising. And that's why when he, well, again, I don't believe a word of this story, but when he got into that volunteer position, he he thrived because he was doing something and making a contribution. Right. Oh. Right. And he could have gotten that at Walmart. Right. He <laughs> Did the work at Walmart make a contribution? Are you saying they don't? Yeah. Yes, I'm saying um, they know. Actually, yes, I am. I am I'm saying. Really yeah. I'm now really people who work at Walmart, <laughs> see us and Marlon are insulting y'all. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. We can have a conversation. Because the thing is, the people who work at Walmart, see, I used to work for the, your, your main competitor. Uh, I know about the games that's played with your hours, that's played with your work situation, that's played with your benefits, that's, work, that's played with your upward mobility. I know about all of it. So I would love to have the conversation because we're probably on the exact same side as far as what's wrong with working with these big box retailers who suck all the profits to the bottom, I mean, to the top and keep you barely making it at the bottom. I ain't sending nobody into that machine. You're in that machine. Hey, great. I hope the best for you. Because and I hope you're trying to find something, to something better. Living they want to. People who work at Walmart Just, definitely make a contribution. People who work at Walmart you need to use that as a stepping stone for a better job. You need to learn. Oh, well, people who work at McDonald's use that as a stepping stone. Serving, I never said of, it. So now we're playing service, rhetorical fetch. Now, whatever. Do not let, now we're playing rhetorical fetch. Walmart Tracy has successfully career. moved the goalpost. But congratulations. I got what you just did. It didn't work on me, but I got what you just did. That wasn't an argument. You just told this man who has retired from 20 something years I in made his a professional suggestion. role to go be a greeter at Walmart. I made a suggestion. <laughs> Please stop quipping this hypothetical man out of Walmart. Hey, hey, get him a safety vest. He can go work for Amazon. Give him a safety vest. He can run for office. That now he will be able to volunteer his efforts to save I think y'all get, well, get joy out of making fun of me. I think that's what it is. Y'all get I, all your kicks from laughing at me. No, that's we're what picking it at him, not you. No, I'm picking at Tracy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm picking literally at going out of my way to pick on Tracy on this one. No, ab absolutely. I don't want you to be confused that I'm not picking on you. I bet wholeheartedly for y'all to shut up without. And when I me. return the favor, don't you say not one word. Don't you say not one word. I already ruined your childhood. I can do it again. <laughs> That's All I say is, Tracy, Look, when, you finish, when you, you finish, when you finish working, and you're trying to find something to do with your time, I will be the first one to still not tell you to go work at Walmart. <laughs> and I may still do it. You I mean, might out of spite, Tracy. All I can say is I literally have until Wednesday morning because of and what's that will be your last you. safety man. That will be your. I will be so happy. I will be <laughs> so happy that I will never have to hear about this ever again, ever. Unless he runs again. Oh gosh, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Am I? Hey, I saw able? a couple of. A couple things with Marcel on it. Doing good. Could keep going, Marcel. Do your thing. Okay, he learned. He's learning. Cool. Am I the a hole? Well, wait. There's more. Ain't more of that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me get this. LOL. Molly gave him a safety vest if he runs for office. <laughs> Walmart got this. Saw me loneliness, y'all. <laughs> oh, got the new person making fun of me. That's okay. It's a, it's okay. I got to wisdom, boy, to Tracy. You ain't heard nothing yet. 
Mom makes girlfriend clean up the house. So my girlfriend and I are both 22. Sorry, Anna. And by the way, this is one of those moving things. So close your eyes. So my girlfriend and I are both 22 years old and we've been dating for six months now. At her house, she does all the cleaning for her siblings and picks up after her brothers because both of her parents work very long hours. My mom is a stay-at-home mom, so she takes care of all of that. My parents never expected me to clean or do any house chores. When staying over, my girlfriend asked me where the mop was. I didn't know, so I asked my mom and she told me to go tell my girlfriend to clean. The same thing happened another day. When I asked where the vacuum was, she said the same thing again. Tell your girlfriend to clean. And I didn't tell my girlfriend what my mom said at the time. My girlfriend purchased her own supplies and has been cleaning the bathroom, the floors, and the kitchen when my parents weren't home. My girlfriend wasn't sure where we kept our laundry supplies, so I decided to help and do the laundry. Usually, my mom just does everything. Last week, when my mom saw me doing the laundry, she got angry and stopped me. She told me not to do it and tell my girlfriend to do it instead. My mom complained that my girlfriend never cleans the house. My mom even said that it was a woman's job to do all the chores and doesn't want me to do any. And obviously, I got annoyed when I heard that. My girlfriend ended up overhearing a bit of this, and I told her what my mom said. My girlfriend was upset that she is expected to clean my house when I'm not. She told me that she's upset that I'm not expected to clean at her house or at my house, but she is at mine. As a side note, her family wouldn't allow a guest to clean any Anyways, it simply is not good manners. She thinks that this is unfair and that this is all because of her gender and she doesn't want this to be the norm. Yesterday, I asked my girlfriend to visit, but she didn't want to visit me because she feels she is expected to clean a second home when she works full time and a lot of overtime. I told her that I don't expect her to clean my parents' house. She pointed out that she already does clean, but I told her that I never asked her to do any of this. Now, my girlfriend is more upset with me. I honestly honestly really enjoy when my girlfriend visits me at home, but now I'm kind of at a loss and I simply don't know what to do. Why your grown ass still living with your mama? That's what you took from this? Well, it would alleviate a lot of this. Because see, mama is in the old school gender role. And she thinks that that's normal. And she's pushing it forward. That's mama being mama. That's her training. That's her belief system. That's her worldview. And so that's what she thinks it should be. Right or wrong, up or down, left or right. That's mama's thing. Why are your why is your grown ass still at your mama's house? He's 22. The fact that you not. Well. Then don't invite your girlfriend over if you know it's not going to be a hospitable place for her to be. You know if your family ain't quite right. So yeah, that's true. don't hold it against her that she don't want to be over there. Just kick rocks on it, man. Go to her house. Go visit her family. Go do that. That's what a lot of couples and married fam- married couples and stuff like that do anyway. They end up drifting to one side or the other more so than the, the other. So that's going to be your life if you marry this woman anyway. And it just seems to turn out that it's going to be more like her family is the normal side and your family is the one you stop by. Uh huh. Hey, everybody. Da, da. Oh, we got to get back on the road. You know? Well, I got <laughs> that, something completely different than what Phoenix I, did. That, that, that is an that entirely my different thir- take on like it thinking, that She's a- cleaning her house because her brothers don't clean. Then she's going over to the, the boyfriend's house and cleaning his girl. No. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. That literally What's wrong with what I said? In my head. I, I have never, I, I've been never here. heard this before. I have never heard. No, I mean, the first thing I even got. You ain't never heard of gender roles, though. No, I mean, I've people have gender roles, roles, but I've never heard of. She's cleaning her own house because she lives at home, obviously. So her brothers don't do anything. She cleans because her parents work long hours. Then she jumps over to the mother and they house, and then she cleans there. Dang, come on, give the girl a break. Okay, this is this. That's is, why she okay, don't want to okay, be there. Let me, break, th- let me break this down. This is why I said I have never. I heard would this break up with them. This is a breakup of I have never heard me. this before. I don't think this is a breakup of warfare. You want me to clean your house and I don't let it? Yeah, it is. Bye. He does not. No, he does not. He does not. 
But his mother does. does. Okay, so, oh, stop, stop, stop. I have never heard this a freaking day in my life. Even with gender roles, I have never heard this a freaking day in my life that the person who comes visit you at your house is at cleaning clean your house. I have never heard that. The closest I even got to a situation like that is to clean up behind yourself. I.e., if your guests come over and they make a plate or something or they got a glass or something, at the very least, could you tell your guests to put it in the dishwasher or put it in the sink or something? Don't just leave it willy-nilly for somebody to clean up behind your grown man. But to actually sit here and say, I'm look, here's the deal with the story. The first thing that popped out of my head was, hey, where's your vacuum? My question, being, you know, normal is, hey, why are you asking? You don't live and here. Your mama asked me to clean up the house. Why is my mama asking you to clean our house? Because you visited. That makes no sense whatsoever. No sense at all. You can have gender all you want to. I have never, ever in my entire existence been over somebody's house and they had me a broom. So, yeah, I don't know if this relationship is going to be together or not. All I do know at this point in time, when this woman tells you in your face, I'm not coming over your house because I don't feel like working for you for free. You That's a problem. Deal with it. I love you and all that other stuff. Ain't going to pay the bills, bro. She already cleaned that one house. She don't need to be coming over there and cleaning your house because she's coming to visit you. I want to know why her siblings can't help her to clean, though. Damn. She, she don't know the ages. Working. Don't know the ages. You know how old I was when I started cleaning? Everybody ain't you, Tracy. And that doesn't mean that it's right. And that, and, and, and the deal is <laughs> because that is gender, genderfication. The mom flat out is telling you I don't want my son cleaning. I do all the work. What this is right here, Tracy, is, oh, you got a girl coming over. So now I don't have to clean. She can clean because she's the same. That's not what you're doing. She is kind of setting her up to take her place. That's what she's trying to do. She is trying to train the girlfriend to To be be the type of wife she thinks should be for her son. That's what she's trying to do. I say, girl, run. Don't you ain't got to be with him. Run, run. Don't you do this. Run, 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 run. And she she said she never asked a girlfriend to clean, but I feel like she keeps the stuff clean where she wouldn't feel the need to volunteer. Dude, please, don't, don't do that. Don't do that whole, I, I didn't ask you to clean. My mom, who I'm going to defend, to the yeah, I'm going to defend my mother for asking such a stupid question. I didn't ask you to clean. Man, come I don't on. understand oh. what you guys are What they right should there. do is send Frank oh, over her house said, and have him clean both houses. That's what they should do. They literally, The girl literally said, I don't want to come over there to clean your house. And the guy was like, well, I didn't ask you to clean the house. Was it me? I, so why are you bad at me? I didn't ask. No, dude, your mama asked no, but, to clean the house, and you was cool with it. He you wasn't cool it, with it. If he was cool with it, really, he, he wouldn't be saying it. what he's saying. He, he should have talked to his mother been like, mama, girl, mama, mama stop it. asking her to clean. She yeah, don't it, live here, mama. Crazy. She crazy. don't live here. Why okay. are you asking her to clean? I'll give you that. She is not, I'll give you that, but don't what you just said. That's not what he said. He has a standard that she all the time he brought this up now is because she is saying, I don't want to come over and clean your house. Now he has a problem with it. She ha- he had no problem with it when she was doing it. When she was that's not what I heard. Cleaning, what I heard, that's not he what didn't I stop heard. her, but like, look, put that down. You don't yeah, live put here. That down. Stop doing like, that. Why are you this cleaning? Your you don't live here. The, the girl is washing he did laundry. Say that. The girl is washing Wait, laundry. Wait, I thought. He did laundry. say that. He, it was when he got caught washing laundry. That's what happened. Mom he, caught him doing washing, laundry. And why should he do laundry? He lives there. Hold on. Be, the mom got mad because he was washing laundry. Who was right. supposed to be washing laundry? In her head, it was the, the girlfriend, girlfriend was supposed to be washing laundry, but the son doesn't agree with that. So he was doing laundry. And I'd be like, Mama, I live here. I'm supposed to do laundry. Not her. She doesn't live here. And if we move in together, we're going to split the chores equally. 
That's what we're gonna do. That's all well and good, Tracy. And but in the reality of the moment, before we craft another world that we live in, the reality of the moment is you live in your mama's house. The best way to address this is to say, Mom, it's not right or fair to expect my girlfriend to do any cleaning when she's Therefore, here. I'm getting and, my it's own because, place. and it's because of the way she feels when she's here that she's not coming over anymore, Mom. That's the conversation you have with your mother. And then at, you can't change your mama's rules. And That's then your mama's after rules. that, uh, I'm getting my own place because you out of your dang on mind. If you think so, she, 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 she found the. See, right y'all be like, y'all like, you like that's to do that I'm fantasy saying. talk. Boundary. That's so cool. That's cool. No, that, no that's y'all. Cool. Y'all, that's y'all is it like Alice in Wonderland stuff? Deal. Here is if my deal. You suspend reality and create another thing. I'm not gonna say now, baby. What you need to do is clean this house. I'm gonna create consequences. No, what 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 Tracy was just doing and what that. house, you want to do what you want to do. Cool bees, knock yourself out. Don't come cry to me when I put up a boundary of telling you I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yep, and move out. Right. That's what he should do. He should just move out because 22 do come on. You should have been at your own place. Unless he maybe, 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 uh, maybe. maybe. Y'all, y'all, I, I, y'all, the only reason I say that he needs to move out. Stuff. No, the only reason I say that he needs to move out. What did you say? I was asking Tracy, are you keeping up with rent prices? Uh, well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that, that, so the only but reason he I can pay her rent. Needs, we don't know if he is or he isn't. But what I, I was going to say, know, though. Well, he ain't paying no rent. But I know ahead. he ain't paying no rent because she still do his laundry. But. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> The thing, though, is if you are still living in your parents' house, you have no right, I don't care how old you are, to change any of their rules. That's their house, right? You want to have your own rules? Have your own space. If they want to negotiate and give you some flexibility to create some rules, then that's just wonderful. That's what you and your parents worked out. But as a general rule, you in someone else's house. So the easiest solution here is my girlfriend ain't coming over here no more because she don't need this stress. I don't need this irritation. And that's the easiest solution right there. She up there if our relationship, whole training program going. I ain't going to lie to you. I literally, I literally agree with you. Once you, in, uh, once you under anybody's roof, by the way, I apologize. I, I know we're talking about parents, but I've heard too many stories of, uh, can you put me up for a couple of places and then you take over and all this other stuff? Uh, can you just put me a little bit and all this up and everything else? So when you under somebody else's roof, uh, under somebody else's roof, you are under everybody else's roof. May not be fair rules. And what do you do when it's not fair rules and you don't like what's going on? Leave. You bounce. Get out. You bounce. Get out. Let's, Get out. Let's, let's, let's reverse this though. Let's reverse this. If the parents move in with the child, do you live under the child's so, roof? Then you live under the child's parent, roof. Who, what parent do you know actually does that? I don't uh, know that many parents who move uh, in I'm with sorry, their children and have a conflict. Wait a minute. Literally speaking from his spirits, because my mom is staying with me. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't even have that many because we're all grown, but. Nothing has happened. She's not up late at night. She's not leaving dishes around and everything else and all this other stuff. So, yeah, my rules, or lack thereof rules anyway, because <laughs> seriously, folks. You, you, well, most families understand. run on understanding. But the understanding. Most households run on understanding. So yeah. you don't have to have rules. And you're in my house. So naturally, whoever it is that is living in whoever's house, should be deferential to an extent, right, to that person's home that they're in. So if your parents have moved into your home, there are things you are going to do to try to accommodate your parents. But then there's also things your parents are gonna try to do to accommodate you. That's what a normal, healthy family would do. 
you know, if now if you got an unhealthy family dynamic, then you're probably gonna have, yeah, you know, the weirdness going on. Yeah, you know, have hell on that one, buddy. Mama because telling your wife what to do when you ain't around. And... I agree. I yeah, that's what I'm more used you. to. Maybe that's my problem. I nearly agree with you, Tracy, because there are some dynamics that's just like that. Well, I, you stay under my roof, you under my roof. Then you move in with your kids. I'm still the parent. Yeah. So it's still my rules. I get what you're saying. But in a normal circumstances, it's like, hey, I gave you these rules and regulations growing up because it will make it easier for you when you are on your own, when you get a, in a relationship, when you get married, when you get a house and you live with somebody. This is the rules that I set up for you so you could have a more stable life. So if that was normal parents, they would understand that moving in with you, they're, they're in the same stability. See, you so it's not going to be rocking the boat because they're living by the same stability that they was teaching you how to live by. I had two parents that lived with me. Maybe it's just how I grew up, but mm -mm, they made it real clear who I was in that relationship. My mom did too. You think I had a rule living with my mom? The rule was do as I say and you won't get hurt. That was the rule. No, I, I have no I'll give you an example. Mama. I'll give you an example. My father was a smoker. I mm -hmm. was like, do not smoke in the house. Do, mm -hmm. You can smoke outside. You mm -hmm. can. Guess what he did? Just, what? just, just, just take a he wild guess. In the house. Sure did. Yeah, because that was his house. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was my house. Oh. But, um, I'm, uh, it's too close to home. I can't speak on that. So. Yeah, I can't speak on that one because I never experienced that. And the funny thing about it is my mom literally stopped smoking yeah, five it's a, years yeah. before she moved in or something like that. So Yeah. People but I get what you I get. I yeah, get exactly like, please do not. That was the only thing I asked. You can you can stay up. Well, no, he was in parts of dementia by then, so no. Do not smoke in my house. Well, he was in parts of dementia. That also adds another layer to the conversation, don't it? And, and the I first still thing don't about want it smoking is, in my house. That's all I understand I that, but what I'm saying is trying to enforce a rule with someone who is battling dementia becomes complicated anyway. Yeah, it does. And I can't you say complicated because I got my daughter right. <laughs> I, my daughter came around and I leave on certain lights, or me and Foxy, we leave on certain lights downstairs. And I found when I wake up in the middle of the night and look downstairs, it's like completely dark. And I'm looking at my daughter like, Did you turn the lights off? Yeah. Why? Why did you turn the lights off? All my life, I've been growing up in this house. You kept yelling at me to turn the bills. Turn my life. You did that. Pay the bills and the blah, blah, blah. Now I'm grown and I come and y'all still need the light sold. Eh, okay, you got a point. She <laughs> has a point. You told her to turn the lights yeah. off. Yeah, but now. That's why she doesn't even... understand that the lights is what keeps the goblins from coming up from the basement at night. Video. Respect the <laughs> goblin. <laughs>
Castillo's got to keep the goblins away. First of all, in my practice bro, your practice your your faith, not my patience. I'm gonna tell you right now, if my grown ass daughters, all of them, come in here talking about some damn goblins. Um, y'all got to go. mm -mm. y'all. What, what? It'd be because they didn't leave the light on. What edible did you chew on before you came up here with this crap? Am I a patriot? It is five seconds, so I'm not even gonna take anybody down. Hell yes, I am. Uh, what was the flag? Arrest Trump. Arrest Trump. That's what makes her a patriot. Huh. I look at people who, who claim to be a patriot and I automatically think that they full of some boo-boo. <laughs> like that term has no value to me. You, you, working, on, you working on a cussing too now? Uh, it's, it, it comes and goes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I know. Yeah, I agree. It's a struggle you. for us. We got to work on it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm working well, on I, it. I, I don't think the that person cursing that doesn't is. cuss at all. Just, I don't think cursing I, is I a said, bad this thing. Year, I was sometimes. not going to cuss one time, and I made it one As video. much, I think, is what you said. Oh, I did say not as much? Yeah, you did say No, no. you backed it down to as much. Oh, Your yeah, original you backed commitment it down. You originally said stop. not at all, but then you was like, no, nah, I'm going to do that as much, not as much. Okay, no, I said at the beginning I was not going to cuss at all. Then I did cuss, and then I went, okay, now I'm going to go back to not as much. And I did pretty good. I haven't cussed as much as season one because season one was like, blanket it, blanket it, blanket it, blanket it, blanket it, blanket it. Like you, season two, and I still appreciate when you do. You say sorry, Tracy. Like I'm just gonna get offended and leave. No, because you don't, and I'm not gonna sit there and go out about. I do that for everybody. Because the funny thing about it, you is, don't say I'm, sorry, I'm Anna. <laughs> I learned the hard way. He, he does when he starts to talk about something that has the effect with the um, LGBTQ community. That's true. He does. That's true. Yeah. Because I learned I learned this because y'all didn't catch it. I did catch it. I sat there and said a while back, viewer discretion advised. And everybody on this, I don't be saying viewer discretion. We ain't grown. You ain't got to do the view. view the then I stopped, then later on down the line, I started showing videos and what's the next thing out of people's mouth? Molly, you gotta warn us about this. You gotta warn us, you gotta warn us that when you gonna show this. I'm like, so from this point on. Uh -uh. Viewer discretion advised. I apologize, Tracy. Anna, this video is movable, so you know you got to move your eyes so you don't look at it. This, I know this is gonna piss you off, but it needs to be said and done and everything else. If you're mad at me after the show, so be it. During the show, whatever. But what you're not gonna do is tell me, Molly, you caught me off guard. Y'all ain't doing that to me no more. Nope. Whatever. Foxy, give that man a hug. Please. What? He having a moment. He having a moment. Come on, his daughter eat edibles. Which, what are edibles? I really don't know. I seriously don't know. It's usually a THC product, so it's like a an extract from marijuana. Ah, so it's when you put it in your food. food. They took usually edibles, which made them paranoid, so they keep the light on. Uh, okay. They were like, oh, I got my edibles. I'm like, are those legal? I got a news flash for you. If Apparently you they are. CBD edibles are illegal edibles? in most places now. Yeah, so the same places saying edibles are legal or saying marijuana is illegal when you smoke. And the same thing. Some of them. Some. Marijuana <laughs> laws are so stupid, it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm confused, but that's 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 gonna be on me. You know, I'm, uh, let me say it like this: This is what I knew it was gonna be done. Yeah, this is how I knew uh, it was gonna it's be. It's the amount done. of how you get. Yeah, when they put the certain percentage of the the chemical that make you high, when they start saying to a certain percentage, then when I when I heard that, I went, "Boy, this is about to be the." dumbest rule that you ever put up because one it would and, and trust me 
it's awful. It's terrible. Don't bring it back. You're a piece of crap when you was doing it. Okay? So let me say so that. Not. When you were sitting there saying a certain amount of a drug, a certain ounce of a drug, that, that was easy for you to make it illegal, to make it wrong and everything else. You don't know what the hell is in the, the drug. You don't know the amount of THC was in it. Why did you change it to you can't have but such and such amount of THC in that, so whoa, it's over that. How the hell you know? It's because know. they're working towards something, Mark. Because they test a lot of batches. They do know exactly how much THC yeah. is in certain edibles, how much CBD, how much CBG, how much they do know. Yeah, the, and the government's always been a number one drug, drug specialist. But the thing is, but that's just it. Until they can find a way to effectively build the right tax base and put the right people in place to control the industry, they have it throttled in the way they do it right now. So they're making sure right now that um, they're very selective on who we can get a license to distribute. They're even more restrictive on who can get a license to grow it. Because they want to make sure that the money makes it back to the right places and that there's not a lot of black and brown people getting access to certain levels of it. Yep. They'll let you be a dispenser, maybe. Right? Usually you have to have I mean, this, that, now this part is gonna conjecture. You gotta have like a white backer somewhere, so you know. But they'll let a certain number of, of non white people be dis dispenser. You get up a little higher into the supply chain, it gets real white. You get down to the growers, almost all white. <laughs> so they're making sure the infrastructure is there because once they're ready to go green light, then you're going to have a situation where tobacco is not going to be as appealing to people. And they're going to switch over to marijuana because see marijuana It'll slow you down, right? There are there are dangers to marijuana. Mainly, it's social dangers. It's not individual dangers, right? An individual danger is going to be whatever you wrap the weed up in, you know, because <laughs> that can mess up your lungs or whatnot. But on the individual level, it can mess with, and, and some people might not agree with me, but I've known enough smokers. Your work ethic, because you're less motivated sometimes. Your driving behavior. Because your motor skills slow down, and basically, I really—and this is a this is a personal thing—I really can't stand being around folks who always smell like some damn weed. I don't want to smell it all the time. I don't want to smell cigarette smoke. I don't want to smell cigar smoke, and I don't want to smell every time you open your car door, and your smell is louder than your music. I don't like that, but that's a personal thing. So that so I can't really legislate that on nobody, but. Once they get the right things in place, it'll roll out. And also you got, uh, this is a weird tangent, but like the uh, EVs, electric vehicles. One of the main reasons you haven't seen that become more accessible to more people is because one, they don't have the charging stations all over the place. So only privileged people can really afford to have their own home stations and live in communities where the stations are more readily available. So until they can fix the infrastructure, they're not gonna get them out as fast as they would like to. And then also the same industries who control fossil fuels are gonna be controlling your electric grid. Yep. So they have to get into a position so that they can stay on top. They're not gonna just let this go wide open and Exxon Mobil becomes a, a, a dying industry. They're not gonna do that. So it, it all works together. I'm gonna move on to the next video. Didn't mean to go poop for a drug because I really didn't know what it was. I was like, what are and you I'm talking just about? Sit here and ignore the the blatant atrocity towards cigar smokers, even if it is personal. Everybody don't want to smell your cigar smoke, dude. There ain't nothing personal. It's what it is. What well, we ever right? Meet up, you at home? Smoke it all up. When I go to when I go to cigar bar, cigar bar, I expect to be surrounded by cigar smoke. 
of the different types of smoke, I would rather smell cigar <laughs> smoke. I think I think pipe smoke is the, the the better one than cigar smoke, and then weed smoke. That's about as far as I can go because the rest of the smoke just is terrible. But when you go to a cigar bar, you know that you're going in there, and hopefully they have a good um, ventilation. ventilation system so you don't smell like it all day. But whatever you wore, that's got to go to the dry cleaners because you can't. <laughs> wow. It's what it is. But I don't want to go to work and smell like your cigar. Oh, when you get a message that you have a leaders meeting next week. <laughs> Guess who won't be there? Next video. They're mad at us. I think. I swear to God, they literally purposely made this whole division. Do they really want a civil war? Of course they do. They want to plan this out. A civil freaking war. Revolutionary war. Of course they do. Of course they do. The ones that created all this havoc, I'd rather prepare yourselves, you motherfuckers. Understand that. What you have done is literally pissing us off even more. Do you understand that? Their people are ready for this battle. You want the battle? It's coming. And believe me, the calling of all us patriots in America and worldwide, you got it coming. And watch what's going to happen when you done let's leave us the fuck alone. But you did not. You keep on doing all this nonsense, pushing it, pushing it. And you all sold this out and you are pure evil. Evil. But guess what? Good over evil. Take a meditate, do something, do something. One, what the heck was she talking about? What was she mad at? Everything shouldn't be on TikTok. Um, what? They keep dividing the Patriots worldwide. I don't even. Who is she talking about? I can't. Talking about you, Tracy. I have, I have absolutely not a clue. I'm like, who is she? No, she's talking about you. She's talking about you. She's talking about me. She's talking about Anna. She's talking about Marlon. That's who she's talking about. See, in her worldview, people who are opposing the established system are troublemakers. And it's, it's worked for America up to now. And now all of a sudden it's a problem. That's how they see it. So they are the ones being set upon. And so they are about? ready to fight. She didn't even say what she was mad about. She's mad about being mad. And she's, she's willing to kill over it. You want, well, who is sitting around on the left talking about, you know what, we good? A revolutionary war. I have never, I've heard leftists say some stupid stuff. Trust me. I'm like, you should really not say that. I have never heard any leftist ever say, you know, we need a civil war. Yep. What? I have. When? I've never heard it. I have never heard it. So here's the thing, right? I've heard plenty of if you, if you, absolutely. And I, I value myself to be a certain level of a revolutionary. It's just that there's a certain point that I have a structure to. Yeah. Right? Like you guys have heard me say plenty of times, you can't just go out there and you ain't got nothing to back yourself up. So when I'm talking about revolutionary thinking, true revolutionaries, like those who are more out there than me, will consider myself to be a, a, a pacifist or whatever, a, a wishy-washy or whatever, because I believe that before I'm willing to, to say for my people to go out here and, and run up against the machine, I need to make sure that my children can eat. I got to make sure my elders can, can be relatively safe. I got to make sure that there is some way to sustain the effort while the fight is happening. But you got some people who are just so fed up, they don't care. They just want to run right into the machine. And those people do exist. Now on the left, the main reason is because they literally come from communities that have been under assault for hundreds of years. So when they say they're ready to go fight, that's because 
if you push someone to the into a corner enough, they don't care about odds. They don't care about anything except fighting to get out of that corner. And America continues to push many communities into that corner and will not let up. So I, I understand that mindset that says, no, screw it. Y'all want to go? Let's go. I understand it. I just I don't want that to happen yet. I, but on I, the I, right, them jokers are ready to go now because they feel that what happened in the Civil War was an unjust outcome. And they feel what happened in the 50s was an unjust outcome. And they feel what happened in the 70s was an unjust. And so for them, it's one defeat after another pushing their mentalities further into the corner. And now they want to fight their way out of the corner. Now, granted, they hold all the power. So I don't understand where they're getting this corner mentality from. Yeah, I'm like, well, But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. What matters is these people want to hurt you. And so long as the people on the left, because that's where my irritation lies, people on the left still want to pretend like we are not in the situation that we are. They still think we can just one good conversation away, one good election away. One, no, the people who are aligned against you might only be about 20 or 30 percent of the country. But that 20 or 30 percent has achieved what you need. Any any movement only needs about 20 percent to be successful. Because 60 percent will never rise up. They will only be subjugated so that other 20 can run hard. And these guys. I still want guys and gals. For, and that music in the back didn't help at all. The, the, the you not knowing is, what, what she's mad for is why you are in danger. The deal is this, and I've said it before on a lot of, you know, the George Floyd killing and everything and the burning buildings and the glass and the whatever you want to say and people so you're okay with this no i'm not okay with it i wish this never happened but two things you should understand i don't condone it but i understand it and two i don't wish this ever happened but you have to understand i wish what happened to make this come into fruition? I wish that didn't happen either, but it did. So this turn the other cheat mentality, I'm done with it. I'm literally done with it. I'm, I, I, I don't care. So this lady the thing for me mad. is the pretending like it's not happening saying that's what's yeah. getting to me. These people that's getting mad and frustrated, irritated, aggravated, everything else because they feel like they lose their power, which they're not. They just don't like some of the outcomes that is happening. Hey, I'll be the first to let you know I'm a revolutionary. I use my voice each and every weekend. But I always also say it, I don't want certain things to happen. But if it does, I completely understand. Because while you're complaining about, and I'm just throwing a number out there, 50 years of things being done that was physically, mentally, and emotionally didn't effing affect your life for generations. Be mad. My grandma used to say, get mad till you pissing your pants for all I care. Because I don't care anymore. You have taken all the care out of my heart. Again, I don't want it to happen, but when it does, if it does, I completely and totally understand it. Oh, it's going to happen. No. And, and, when it and, does, and, and when it does, 
and everybody wants to talk about how terrible and sad and bad and frustrated and aggravated and, bad and dangerous and blah, 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 blah. Yes, it was. But what choice did you leave us? Oh, I, said it, well, I, said it the the, I said it last night. I said it last night on the show. We're not laying down anymore. We laid down before, and it got worse. It's over. We're not laying down. We're not stopping. We're not even slowing down anymore. We're not going to win every battle. But this ain't no damn cakewalk, folks. As much as y'all want to do, and I understand this thing, we need to we need to get our crap together. But I'm telling you right now, this ain't gonna be no cakewalk. So here's a couple things. Um won't be a cakewalk, but it'll be a really one-sided ass whooping. Okay. First of all. We ain't got the number. So that's why I need people to be more intelligent about their revolutionary talk. Right? Because you ask for a fight, your ass can't fight. You know? You got a pistol and maybe maybe one other type of gun. You're going up against conservatives. Right? Conservatives are people who have been taught to kill since they were children. See, you got anger. They got experience. You ever killed? I'm not talking about you, Marlon, per se. I'm talking about people out there who want to get really rambunctious what they talk. You ever you ever killed an animal? You ever had to slice a living thing's throat? You ever had to pull the flesh off of something? You ever had to be right around the smell or look at something that was once alive, now looking at you with dead eyes? You never did that. They have. So where you have to take a leap from never having done these things to doing it to a person, they have to take a leap from having done this to animals and now having to do it to a person that they don't view as equal to their personhood. This ain't equal. Then you got a lot of force multiplier. A guy who's grown up, a guy or gal, who's grown up hunting, that means they know how to be uncomfortable in the woods. They probably know more about flora and fauna than you ever will. And they can shoot 100 and 200 yards out. And then 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. <laughs> Meanwhile, if you can't see it, you can't shoot it. That's not an equal fight, folks. And then take it past that. Let's just hypothetically say black and Latinos come together. Like that probably be the most natural combination, right? Okay. That still ain't going to get you, but maybe 30-ish percent of the population? Girl, you in trouble. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Your white allies? Let the bullets start flying. And now it's about your life. When it's about your life, people who were talking get real quiet. And they'll slide on back. They won't participate in what happens to you, but they're not going to be much use for you <laughs> when the bullets are flying. Because they're scared of the same people. So if you want to be a revolution, this is the way I look at it. If you want to be a re revolutionary out there, young brothers and sisters, be intelligent about it. Look at how the people fight in all these other countries. Look at the Ukrainian resistance. The difference between them and us, ain't nobody going to come give us shit. <laughs> okay? Ain't nobody giving us a damn thing. Canada ain't going to... If you are another country and you see America fall in the Civil War, 
what side you gonna lean on? You're gonna lean on the side that you think is gonna win because you don't want to deal with them next. So I really need people to dial back, dial that back, take that, take that energy and shift that into something. Be ready to fight if they come for you. But understand that at that point, the fight's already over. So go all out. Make it as even Stevens as you can possibly make it. But we, since we're not there yet, the more important thing I would love for people to do, educate your children, educate each other, build businesses, build small communities, build partnerships, build infrastructure so that when this Jim Crow 2.0 really starts to come out, because it's already starting to happen, folks, if you pay half a damn attention, you will at least have some some insulated things. Especially you guys out there who like to look back at the 1920s and 30s and 40s of Jim Crow segregation and be like, well, we were more together then. We had it better then when we were in segregation. First of all, you're a dumbass. There's a reason second why we were more together. All, you ain't been watching this show if you actually think Yeah, they haven't been watching this show. I'm like, yeah. on this damn show that, that wasn't true. No, we were more together, but that's like being a bunch of people on a cell block. Yeah, you were more together because you had to be. So if you're willing to give up all your creature comforts to be more together so we can all suffer together, okay, you can get that. But I'm sorry, that was two grand. Dag nabbit. But I'm oh, that was only got that. I got it down to two. That's okay. That's okay because it works. Good. It works for the next video. No, because the other one I kept down on less than three minutes. No, because so you went off on me count. about saying send the man to work at Walmart. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, now we were all in that one. We were all Wait in that one. Minute. Wait a minute. Dude, you think you slick. You think you slick. Anybody catch on? It went from two to three minutes. Yeah, I'm sure it did. What? It wasn't I put a time clock and it's going to be under two minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, I was a minute and it 10 seconds. I'm building. I'm getting better. You're going the opposite like direction training. of your journey. No, I'm not. You said two minutes. Then you're going to three short. minutes. I did. I said my timer was two 10. minutes. Okay. My timer was two minutes, and I managed to hit the first mark. Okay. Then the second time, I went like three minutes, which means I did not hit my mark. But it was still better than when I do a five, six minute rant. So I'm saying it's still better. If you're measuring me against perfection, I will always lose. But I don't measure myself against perfection. I measure myself against how I performed previous. So I'm taking this as a particular level of a win. I can't save space. <laughs> Last video of the night. You're not going to see what. Thank is you, written. Anna. You're not going to see what is written on the screen. But since we're on this subject, and this can be said across the board of everything we've said so far tonight. What's written on the screen is how I really want to respond when I hear hateful rhetoric from the GOP officials regarding regarding kids, Native American and history, CRT, teachers, and bad books. Add to what we just finished talking about, that fits into the category too. I'm not even going to take anybody down because... I want to see everybody's expression. So, yeah. This is how I feel when we hold these type of conversations with people who just know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. They don't want to learn. They don't want to know. And they still pull out this BS like the people we had to deal with yesterday. Shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of shut fuck Mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. She could have said that out there. She could have said that.
she had to use the F word all the many times. Why why are you trying to police this woman's speech? You know what? Women have had people police their speech forever. Don't try and to, to make this a She said if she were a man, I'd say own. the same thing. Stop. Don't even make that no. One of it's, her own. Her own sisters in the struggle. Mm. First Amendment. I'm sorry. If, if she were a man, I would say exactly the same thing. First Amendment. The First Amendment does give you rights to say what you want. Doesn't mean I have to like it. I'm going to find that mountain. That literally is how I've been feeling. I'm sorry. I, I, I know when I say what I say because it's late and everything else when I say I don't give a damn and my actions don't match my statement. But I said, but when I say I don't care no more is when I go, I just don't care about your rhetoric anymore because one, it's full of crap. Did anybody put? Did anybody pick up the new book? I'm full of shit by that lady that was talking yesterday from Bars and Nobles. No, you didn't, because you couldn't even try to put the definition of woke together. Is so this she, going viral? Is this going to go viral? It, 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 that's what bothers me so much. Is I don't care about your crap anymore. I just don't. What I do take is what you are saying. And the policies that's put in place for the people who actually give a rat's butt about what you're saying. I pay close attention to that. But I, 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 no. your take your time, Marlon. Take your time. The videos and stuff like that. Let them so, use your baby. No, we agree on it. Just tell them to take time. It's hilarious to me because one, well, it's two things. One, you're not even coming up with anything brand new. Folks, we are going into the third season of this show. Do you honestly think you're going to say something we've never heard before? Really? Really? Well, the thing that gets me, Marlon, is just how much, and I know everybody's out here. That's why we got all these different um, podcasts and, and, and different things. And so everybody's letting the things that usually rattle around in their head fall out of their mouth. Um, but it's just so frustrating that people really do not think that they need to have any research or, um, or deeper understanding than surface gut level to talk about these things. You know, you're going to write a book and devote an entire chapter to AKA wokeism or whatever that is. And you can't at the drop of a dime, Give us a definition for it. Give us um, your definition. This is for going it. viral, isn't it? I literally look. The funny thing about, but I mean, it, that's what happened. We didn't even say. We didn't even say because you couldn't even lie your way out of. We didn't say give the definition of woke. Give your definition of woke, and you couldn't even do that. And you want me to still care about the crap that comes out of your damn mouth? I she could have literally opened her book, just went don't. to the chapter, and then read what was in her book. But did no, she? But she nope. couldn't do that. She couldn't. she couldn't do that. And the reason no, why the word, the is word because word her was part of the rhetoric, the definition of woke through her. The word woke is part of the. But yes, yeah, she the, wrote a whole book about it. With a, because with her a audience, in it. which by the way, Tracy, I guarantee you, there absolutely is not a chapter in it for woke. I bet is, you there is. I bet you there is. I bet you she wrote a whole oh, okay, chapter. Really? If there's a definition of it in that chapter, she should have opened have that to. book. It does, it, I didn't the say the point. chapter had to be 15 pages, it could be two pages. You're like, well, that's a chapter. Y'all, y'all, yeah, true. But, you know, we got to be careful when we're having these discussions about these people. I mean, if they're not coming with righteous intent, then you're arguing a point around the point. Right. Or as Lewis Black would say, you're 
you're debating the facts around the facts, not actually debating the facts. Her audience for this book is not the liberal thinker. It's, it's, it's not the independent thinker. It's a conservative audience. They've already decided for themselves what woke feels like. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the word selection is. It's the feeling. And so when you have someone who's operating off of a belief system, no, there is no definition, right? If, if, if you ask somebody who is, you know, religious, well, define faith. Closest thing they're going to give you is the scripture. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. That is not a definition, but it is a guidepost towards what this means to me. Right. It's more it's a person's faith is huge. I would think most of us would agree whether it's rightly placed or wrongly placed. Their faith is a huge construct that they build upon and they, they layer things into. And it goes into how they view family and social and God and all of these things. These people just take a new slogan. And make it part of their religion. Woke is a part of their religion. Now, if you look at the things that woke manifests in, it's usually anti-black, anti-general term gay. Really what it is, anti-icky. What makes me feel uncomfortable? If I feel uncomfortable, it is woke. That's it. Okay, let me help you. Let me help y'all people out. Yep, just like this the is, trans this is, this is in East Palestine. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, you're going down the wrong path. You're not gonna listen. I'm just doing this for my own entertainment because, again, somebody's gonna listen to this and go, "Yeah, that makes sense." Okay. At any time, your policies, your procedures or your rules, government, state, city, lifestyle choices in your life is dictated by the effing colors of M&Ms, you're going down the wrong path. According to you. Because, Marlon, where does it stop? You see, first, <laughs> we talk about, no, no, where does it stop, Marlon? I mean, you tell me I have to be accepting of George wanting to be called Mary. Then you tell me I have to be accepting of George wanting to be referred to as she. Then, oh, then you tell me I have to be accepting of George having a transition procedure done, and now I not only have to call George Mary, and I have to use George's pronoun of she, but I also have to call George a woman. And now you're taking the candy, and the candy that has been Cast as a traditional woman. I don't know how Eminem is a traditional woman, but cast as a traditional woman for 50 years and you want to make it uh, asexual. So now everything is just topsy-turvy and blended together, Marlon. Where's the line, Marlon? Where's the line? Y'all both is wrong. This all started with many mouse wool pins. And I don't understand yeah, no, how nobody's that was because they hate Hillary Clinton. See, Minnie Mouse put on that pantsuit, <laughs> and immediately she was Hillary Clinton. And do y'all hear this? Do y'all actually hear this? Crap? <laughs> do y'all at y'all? This is the Civil War you want to fight for? Minnie Mouse and Eminem's. This is your fight. Hey, we haven't even started on the Donald Duck Daffy Duck Wars. 
I mean, we could go a whole oh, and, on that. And when are we actually going to start talking about the Pluto versus the Goofy situation? I know, right? People don't even want when to When are we going to actually it. get into that? We need to learn how to get along, people. I hate you all. I really do. Y'all make this so, so much worse than your actual is. We can't hear you. Good. I didn't say anything very nice. He having one of them moments. I didn't say anything very nice. You didn't hear me. Oh, we all heard you. <laughs> All they did was change the Eminem shoes. Yeah, he did. 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 Um, complexsimpleman.com or complex mind simple complex mind slash simple man on YouTube. Because I couldn't say that shit worked a damn. I know you called me simple minded like three times, but it's okay. I tried my best. I kept saying my I tried my best not to do it, and I kept like, oh, I'm so tired. I know I'm gonna mess this up, Adam. I can be found at Lavelia, etc. That was enjoying herself. Tracy? TracyMediaLLC.com and join us this Friday because High Heels and Blue Jeans is making its debut. Yes. But also remember what happened to me. No, we're not going to remember. Tuesday. Tra- t- the Tracy Show comes on Tuesday. That's right. The show comes on Tuesday. That's what we were talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, non-conforming individuals, that is our show for tonight. Oh, and what a great show it was. I do appreciate this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So one thing about high heels and blue jeans, we're gonna invite everybody to do like an ask us nearly anything. So if you have any questions, if, you, if something coming on your mind, you want to ask us about it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. We'll be open to fewer questions. Even from us? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. Mm-hmm. Tracy was real slow on that one, boy. She I said slow. absolutely. <laughs> we <did. laughs> We're going to have fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. we got a lot of things planned. Oh, especially the questions I'm going to come up with. And until next time, we will see you when we see you. Peace. Nearly anything. Nearly. Nope. I heard everything. We're going to find out who's the dominatrix out of this joint. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>